Hello, my name is Zachariah Van Siders with Old Man Gaming, and this is another horrible game review. Before we get started, everybody's favorite part, the disclaimers. Number one, I do not do this professionally. I don't make any money at this, so I'm not going to go back and edit stuff uh, if weird stuff happens in the background. Number two, I do not give games scored scores uh, because... I believe video gaming is one of the most subjective forms of art. Therefore, you will get an overview, pros, cons, and then whether or not I'm going to stick with it personally. At this point, I'd usually give you the, I only get about 10 hours with it. It's a working man's score to review, kind of just a glimpse of the game. Um, but this is a very different situation. Because today, I am reviewing Borderlands 3. It came out on Friday. Now, I am a huge Borderlands fan. I own all the other games. I've played all the other games quite a bit. My brother, uh, who is friend of the channel, Phil Billy, uh, brother-in-law, uh, is actually a super Borderlands fan and only plays Borderlands. Um, now, so this review is actually myself, friend of the channel, Phil Billy, and friend of the channel, a tiny wizard. I am citing them both. Because on Saturday, I went over to my brother-in-law's house, and we played nine straight hours of split-screen co-op. That is where I am basing the majority of my review, so keep that in mind. I've also played about three hours solo, so I have a good idea of how that goes. And the only thing I have not gotten a chance to try is the online multiplayer. Now, a tiny wizard also was playing the game separately on his own split-screen and had some other things to t tell me so while you're only hearing my voice this review is of three minds so keep that so let's get in with it overview uh it's borderlands 3 it picks up where borderlands left off um it continues the storyline it's also a good jumping in point uh there's no uh, they do a good enough job of just uh putting you in a place where you don't need to know the characters um, and the game is pretty tongue-in-cheek anyway so if this is your first Borderlands game it's a great game to jump onto. Um, the idea behind it is it's a first-person shooter uh, it's a looter shooter so basically you're trying to level up your character to get better guns to level up your character to get better guns uh, to fight bigger ag bad guys that whole thing. Now, despite the rumors prior to this that this was going to be as a games as service model, uh, Gearbox is pretty stuck rigidly with their old plan, which is this is basically Borderlands 2 uh, revamped, remade, and with much better systems. Um, the gunplay has been in depth done. Uh, the movement is way better in this than two. Um, same with the enemies. I mean, it's just, there's so many quality of life improvements that it feels like, it feels like a, a, an upgraded version of two with a lot more stuff to do. The writing is on par with what it's been in the past, um, despite hiccups with Randy Pitchford being a psychopath, um, as well as some other, you know, crazy controversy before the game came out with voice actors. Um, it's, it's all pretty solid. A pretty solid experience if you're a Borderlands fan. And if you're not a Borderlands fan, you're still going to have fun. Um, I actually really enjoyed the tweaks to the movement, but we'll get to that in pros. Um, so far, that's the overview um, of the game. You can play in split screen co op with your friends, and one of their big marketing things was play with other people, play any way you want. So you get the split screen co op, uh, split screen local co op. You can also play online, and they have also added loot instancing, which previous Borderlands didn't have. Meaning, uh, the loot that you see, the other players don't see. They can't take it from you, and you can't take theirs. Um, in addition to that, um, if you pop into a friend's game, it will scale your character to what your friend is doing, and vice versa. Therefore, uh, you don't have to worry about like your character being overleveled or whatever, which was a huge problem with the last games. And of course, if you still wanted to play it the old way, um, and loot, use some old school power leveling techniques, uh, you can actually set the game to do that as well. So that's nice that they left that option to play the original way in there, even though I highly prefer the new way. So let's get into the pros, okay? Pros of this game, star of the show, are the guns. They handle amazing. They shoot amazing. The noises they make are perfect. They're... Uh, the way each one reloads in a different way, each one fires a different way. There, for this sheer amount of procedurally generated guns in this game, 
the absolute beauty of what you get in each gun. Um, the original Borderlands games, you'd have your love stories with your guns, um, but you wouldn't get them until mid-game at the earliest. Everything before that was just kind of junk to get you to the next gun. Uh, I already fell in love with like three or four guns to the point where I can't sell them. I need to keep them and I'm probably going to mount them in my room in the ship, which they've given you in this room, which is in this game, which they didn't in the previous, um, to display them just because I loved them so much. Like, even though I've out leveled them, uh, I'll even say, go as far as to say that some of the guns I stuck with well past the point that I needed to stick with them, that I should have stuck with them, making some of the battles harder just because I didn't want to put it down because it was so much fun to shoot. If the star of the show is the guns, uh, best supporting actor is the enemies. They loaded this game with enemy types. Every area is just a, a symphony of new characters to fight. And even when it's not, uh, most of the character, most of the enemy types have like three or four different looks to them. So it never gets stale. It never feels like you're fighting the same guy over and over again. Um, in addition to that, the enemies react to your bullets, your fire, so much better. They have so much more movement themselves, uh, so it actually makes the combat way more um, in-depth and strategic. It's, it's not just the old-school Borderlands feel of, this is a punching match, a trading punching match. I go into a thing, and I, yeah, I move around, but basically, if my level's high enough, I kill everybody. If it's not, I die. Um, with this, there's there's serious strategy into the gunplay that goes along with the leveling and whatnot, which I can't tell you how much I enjoyed that. I, just watching the enemies get knocked back with a shotgun blast or stumble when I shot him in the foot was just thrilling. Absolutely thrilling to have that much depth. The loot instancing is magical as well. I was a player who took my time on guns, and a lot of times if I was playing with a lot of people in the original Borderlands, I'd lose them. Um, and in any case, I ended up playing the old Borderlands games very solo because getting in a group with somebody else meant you had to have the same level, and I didn't have characters at every level at every point. Some people would play more than you, and some you would play more than others, and then your group's all messed up. So the online, the, the instancing is great. It finally gives you that feel where you can just jump into a friend's game. It doesn't matter where he's at in the game. And you'll still have some fun. You'll still get loot that's useful to you. Um, and the bad guys will still feel challenging. Um, and vice versa. Uh, so I love that part. I absolutely love that part. Even though I haven't been able to get take full advantage of it yet. Um, and one of the cool things they put in is you can actually just drop your gun should you be playing split screen and your friends see it and go, hey man, I would really want that. You can just pick it up and drop it and it'll drop it into his game. Now I wish I could really go into depth about all the little tweak changes that this game has made that just a Borderlands player has been clambering for. You can refill ammo without actually going into a vending machine. You can fast travel from anywhere on the map. You can mantle on ledges now. You can slide. Like, there's so many little quality of life stuff that they have added to, to both the movement and the pacing of the game that makes it never boring. Like, even, like, when you're going through your menus, like, there's just always something interesting to do or interesting to see in the game. And I have yet to get bored or feel like I've done anything repetitive. And while the game is supposedly only 30 hours long, um, if you do the main storyline, my brother-in-law and I played nine straight hours and we barely got off the first planet. And I know that there's more than three planets. So it's a lot of side stuff. I mean, we were doing every side mission, but it's a lot of side stuff. And the side stuff feels just as good as the main mission stuff. It keeps you going. It's, it's, it's a real game. It's a real joy to play. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to get into the cons. And uh, I'm going to get my hands dirty a, a little bit on this one. Cons. Number one, first and foremost, if you are a game who totes the fact that you're one of the few games that has split-screen co-op locally, uh, if you tote the fact of your multiplayer suite, play anywhere with anyone, um, the fact that split-screen co-op is super glitchy and almost does not work is unacceptable. It just is. I love this game. I want to give it a 10 out of 10. I want to shout its praises from the rooftops. But you cannot release a game with evident graphical glitches and audio glitches. You cannot release a game that 
drops the frame rate by 30 frames per second when somebody goes into a menu. You can't do that when you're toting that. It's not like they tagged this local multiplayer on at the last second. This was something they would broadcast every time they got on stage at any trade show. You cannot have that feature be bad, and the feature's bad. To make matters worse, none of the reviews originally talked about this because they only gave PC copies out to all of the, all of the reviewers, and you gotta wonder if that wasn't some skeezy stuff, and I hate, I hate that this game, that's such a game, such a good game that we've been waiting for for so long, its release is tainted by this BS, okay? It just It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous that you've got to do that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of upset with Gearbox on that front. Also, we uh, another uh, a tiny wizard also noticed that the um, the writing was way too small if you're on anything under a 55-inch TV. And I hate to tell you, there's a lot of people out there who only have a 55 or less inch TV. I mean, we're not all rich. So I, I feel as though... <clears throat> At least Gearbox has recognized it. They have said that they are going to be correcting it. So hopefully we're going to see a patch in the next two weeks and that corrects it. But I got to tell you, anybody looking for co-op multiplayer out of this, you're going to be a little bit disappointed just because of glitches and whatnot. Now, just so you know, the rest of my bitches, the rest of my cons are nitpicky. So please don't at me. They're very personal nitpicky things, but I'm doing a review, so I got to say them. Okay, so nitpicky number one, the vehicle combat still blows. Uh, it's a little bit better, and uh, but the the Mad Max post-apocalyptic feel, the total package, not just the guns, but the the cars is still not there. They they, they just didn't get cars right again. I, I do like that they added quests to retrieve cars. They also added a way to hijack cars, which is very cool. They also added that you can shoot individual characters out of the cars. Um, which is also really cool, um, but it's it's just not there. It doesn't feel good. It's still kind of something you just do to get from point A to point B, and that makes me kind of sad. I was expected, but I'm being nitpicky, and it's something I really wanted to be better. It was like one of the only areas of improvement that I thought that they could make, um, and it just didn't really improve that much. So, kind of a bummer. Okay, so that's, that's really the cons for me. Um, again... The, the co-op split screen thing bothers me quite a bit. Um, I know there's a lot of people up there who have noticed lag and frame rate drops in single player. I didn't notice any, so I can't comment on that. Um, and honestly, it wasn't so bad that it wasn't manageable when we were playing. Obviously, we played nine hours of it, but still, when you're going to make a game and you're going to tote a feature, the feature has to be good. So that brings us to whether I'm going to stick with it, and you bet your frickin' ass I am. Um, I loved every minute of playing it, even the times when it was glitching, it was irritating, but it, all it took was a reset, and we were good. And not using the menus when you're playing with another player. I love this game just as much as I love, probably more than I love the second one. I still think it's a great improvement, I think with a couple of patches, it's going to be perfect. Um, I will say, uh, also, they've done so many other little quality of life things that I just don't have time to mention in this video. Like, they made the vending machines actually have guns that are worth it instead of just a place that you turn your junk into money. Uh, so it's actually worth it to buy stuff, which is never worth it. You just go out and you loot until you got better stuff. Um, they, the, the sanctuary ship is so immersive and wonderful. There's so many trophies and little customization things to do there. The, the new you stuff they've done is so much better. There's emotes and everything. You can you can make your character look completely different from somebody else's, so it doesn't give you that feel of like you could have four of the same character on there. They could all look like completely different people. Um, it's okay. I'm I'm getting a little ridiculous about this. Uh, it does have some problems again on the split screen, but it is not enough for me to not play this, and it's only going to encourage me to play it more that I can jump in with my friends anytime, regardless of who's played what, when, and how. So I will definitely be sticking with this. I will be playing it a lot and putting a lot of hours into it for some time. So, that's a review. Borderlands 3. I hope this helps some people. Um, if it did not, there are tons of reviews out there that are much better than me. Just remember, none of them mentioned the split-screen co-op problems because they didn't receive review copies 
on anything but the PC. So, in any case, I think as long as you guys keep watching this, I'm going to keep making these. So that was a rough sign-off, but uh, thanks again, uh, and I'll see you next time. Uh, and of course, check out my podcast, check out Predator vs. Prey, check out all my channel has to offer. Content? Well, there's more of a horrible content all over this channel. You can check out our horrible podcasts, or you can check out our other horrible reviews. Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on, and then we'll let you know when horrible products are ready for you to view. You can also do so at Facebook, Old Man Gaming. And then, we can notify you in two different places. Fun! Also, click any of the links around you to witness some of that horrible programming right now. I mean, why do anything else? It's YouTube.